TopeCon, hello everybody, I am Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic.com and welcome to your Saturday morning news. Yes, the reception to last week's Saturday morning news video was so positive, I think this has become a thing on the channel. So just in case you left a comment on last week's video, from the bottom of my cold, dead heart, Thank you so much for your positive comments. I read most of, if not all of them, and honestly, they made my weekend. They really did. Thank you so much. But without any further ado, here are this week's Saturday morning headlines. Seth Rollins has provided an update on a WWE superstar who has been missing from our screens. <laughs> we have the latest on WWE's contract offer to Rey Mysterio. And we have an update on WWE's creative team structure. Now Seth Rollins and the greater good have been one do-gooder short on Monday Night Raw since all the way back on the June 22nd episode. And that's because Austin Theory, who of course was a star of Evolve Wrestling and a star of Big Mouth on Netflix. You know he was, don't you? He's been missing and he hasn't been heard from since. Serious allegations of misconduct were thrown Austin Theory's way as part of the Speaking Out movement on Twitter a couple of months ago, and seemingly, because of those allegations, WWE took him off the air. And the Monday Night Messiah himself, Seth Rollins, has been speaking to Sporting News and has provided the latest update on Austin Theory's status with WWE. Rollins said he had some... I need to stop doing the impersonation. Sorry, this is serious news. He had some personal issues that came up, so he took some time off to sort through them for the past month or two. It's hard right now, but we hope everything's good for him, so we hope to have him back sooner rather than later. So as I stand in front of you, a no good, useless hack on the interweb, I reckon if somebody as prominent within WWE as Seth Rollins is saying Austin Theory will be back, I think it's safe to assume that Austin Theory will be back. Theory himself, of course, has gone completely silent on social media since June the 23rd, the day after the episode of Monday Night Raw when he went missing. And speaking of things that have been silent, WWE, if you are going to bring back Austin Theory to television, do not stay silent like you did during the whole Velveteen Dream thing. Tell us what you did to investigate. Tell us what you found. Tell us what is going to be done going forwards. There should never be any grey areas when it comes to serious accusations like this one. Ambiguity, it should be completely out the window. Fans should not be sitting back watching weekly television shows, watching a wrestler, doing the wrestling inside the wrestling ring, and assuming things that may or may not have been done. Surely WWE need to have a more concrete protocol in place than somebody on a conference call asking Triple H, hey, what did you find? And Triple H just replying, well, we looked, but we didn't find anything. Be more, you know, be more serious about this WWE. Who's that man with A, so I, R, E, Y, Mysterio? That was terrible. I'm very sorry. But could Rey Mysterio be on the brink of signing a new contract with WWE? According to Dave Meltzer himself in the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, WWE have offered Rey Mysterio a fresh, shiny, new three-year contract. However, no terms of this contract offer have been revealed to the public, and we do not know if Rey Mysterio has signed on the dotted line. Although, of course, that could just be down to Rey Mysterio being slightly blind in one eye, aiming to hit the dotted line and repeatedly missing because, of course, globluxation is a thing in pro wrestling these days. And according to more rumour and innuendo on the interweb, which means it has to be absolutely true, AEW have reportedly matched WWE's offer to Rey Mysterio, but it is fully expected that Rey will stay with WWE, largely due to the investment WWE have put into Rey's son, Dominic. Dominic, of course, has been on absolute absolute flames on Monday Night Raw in his dealings with the greater good, Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy, with the street fight against Seth Rollins set to take place at SummerSlam tomorrow night, and in my opinion, it's the most intriguing match on the card. It's certainly the match I'm looking forward to the most, which is testament to Dominic, to Seth, to Murphy, and to Rey Mysterio's work over the past couple of months. It's been weird in places, but also fantastic in places. Back to Rey Mysterio though, back in 2018, Rey Mysterio signed a two-year deal with WWE with an option for a third year. Those initial two years are set to come up and end 
next month. And with Ray proving beyond any shadow of any doubt that he has not lost a step inside the squared circle, and with Ray himself a little while ago saying that before he retires, he wants to share a ring with Dominic, it seems a no-brainer that WWE should lock him down for a few more years. Hey, I'm all for it. Rey Mysterio, Dominic, absolutely fantastic stuff. WWE's creative team is not what you thought it might have been, and that is according to Dave Meltzer once again in this week's edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Ravy Davey reports that despite his role as the executive director of both Monday Night Raw and Friday Night Smackdown, our good friend, brother love himself, Bruce Pritchard, is not the main driving force behind WWE. WWE Creative. The main man on WWE Creative is actually Ed Kosky, while Brucey P himself simply sits back, oversees everything that's going on, and reportedly just makes sure that Vince McMahon's wonderful creative vision is actually done. So to me, a fan of The Office, the American version of course, it sounds like Ed Kosky does the day-to-day, -day, while Brucey P, he does the more big picture stuff. They're Jim and Michael Scott. And of course, some of you might have seen the, the, the earth-shattering news earlier this week that Vince McMahon is reportedly on the brink of handing the reins to creative for Monday Night Raw to the best professional wrestler in the world and his darling son, Shane McMahon. Dave has provided an update on this entire scenario with Shane McMahon potentially becoming the main creative force on Monday Night Raw and basically he doesn't know. But Dave Meltzer has asked people in and around WWE and the people he has asked, they can't believe this story is a thing that could potentially happen. But in my mind, knowing that Shane McMahon is beyond any shadow of any doubt the best professional wrestler in in the world, if Shane McMahon wanted to turn his attentions to creative teamwork, he would indeed be the best booker the world has ever seen. Better than Booker T. And finally, air humping enthusiasts around the world, do I have some news for you. You might recall right at the start of the lockdown era in the world, the lead singer for End Ever After, the band who produced Jeff Hardy's No More Words theme, claimed that WWE have the right to use that song whenever they want. Jeff Hardy himself then air humped his way onto WWE backstage, doing one of those segments where he looks at Twitter questions on his phone and answers them. He saw the news that the lead singer of End Ever After claimed that WWE have the rights to that theme and he basically begged WWE to let him use that theme on SmackDown now. Yeah. <laughs> WWE then presumably said to Jeff Hardy, no more words from you, Bonnie Lad. You get on that entrance ramp, you use your old tag team theme, and you air hump like you've never air humped before. Ooh. Fans of no more words the world over do not threat any longer because Mrs. Jeff Hardy herself, Beth Hardy, has confirmed no more words will be making a return to our screens in the not too distant future. I say in the not too distant future, but Beth took to Twitter last night to say, where the hell is it? No more words is being reserved for actual live crowds. <sighs> That could be 10 years from now. But still, it's the hope that keeps you going, isn't it, everybody? So some nice news to end on there. I have been Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic.com. Thank you for joining me for these Saturday morning news headlines. Coming up on the YouTube channel today, we have WTF moments for Friday Night Smackdown. We have graded with my former husband, Sam for Friday Night Smackdown. We have some form of interest in SummerSlam documentary. What that could be about, I've got no idea. And then tomorrow, AEW Dynamite coverage. Myself and Jack the Dubber... Ugh, Dubber? Myself and Jack the Jobber have done a tier list ranking on every single SummerSlam event ever. It's two hours long. It's absolutely mahoosive. And then we get to SummerSlam itself and all the normal coverage, WTF, what happened at Graded. That all comes for SummerSlam on Monday. I've been Ross Woodell once again, and I'll see you next time.